Okay, so when building a PDA for a language, there's basically two main ways to do it. The first thing is to just explicitly construct the PDA from scratch. The other thing you can do is, given a language, you can construct a grammar that generates that language, a context-free grammar, importantly. So what would this one be? So 0 to the n, 1 to the n, and there's a n is strictly greater than 0. So it looks like 0, s, 1, or 0, 1 ought to do it. Then you can just take this grammar and convert it to an MPDA using the algorithm we described before. Now, constructing the PDA from scratch can be more difficult, and in some cases may not even be possible if this language is context-free but not deterministically context-free, because NPDAs really do have more power than DPDAs. But um, DPDAs, deterministic pushdown automata, are more useful. And the reason is you don't get this exponential blowout property when you're trying to evaluate a string that's rejected, right? You don't have to check all the paths, because there's only going to be one path. It turns out if you add epsilon to this language, DPDAs have a bit of strife with it, because they can't, you can't check for an empty string, right? Um, if empty and zero are both in the language, there's no way for, um, given a zero, to just choose to take the empty direction. So turns that gives it strife, so we have to have n strictly greater than zero. So what's my PDA going to do? Intuitively, it's going to push all the zeros on the stack until it sees ones. It's going to start popping ones until the input is empty and the stack is empty. So let's do that. So from the initial state Q0, if I see a zero on the stack and an empty stack, I'm going to go back to Q0 and then push the zero onto the stack. Right? And if there's any other input, I'm just going to get stuck and reject because this string has to start with a zero, right? Similarly, the zero on the input and a zero on the stack, I'm going to pop the zero and then put that zero back and put this new zero on top as well. Because when you read a symbol off the stack, it's always consumed, which means you've got to push it back on again. Okay? So I see a zero on the input, see a zero on the stack, push them both back. And then when I start seeing ones on the input, and there has to be a zero on the stack, because there's at least one zero, then I start popping them back off again. So I pop the zero, and then when I see ones and zeros on the stack, I again keep popping them, so I can just do a loop of popping stuff. And then when the ones are empty, that is the input's empty, and the stack is empty, that means we're down to Z, then I'll accept. Okay? So we can draw this uh, DPDA grammatically, or like diagraphically, I should say. So if I see a zero on the input and a Z on the stack, push them both back, go back to Q0. So see a zero, Z, and then push zero, Z. If I see a zero, on the input and a zero on the stack, push them both. So zero on the input, zero on the stack, push them both. If I see a one on the input and a zero on the stack, delete the zero. And if the input's empty and the stack's empty, transition to Q1 and accept. Okay, so let's try this, right? Let's suppose my input is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. My stack is by default empty. So let's just do what this DPDA tells me to do. So if you see a 0 on the stack, which I, which I don't, so that's no good, it looks like I don't have a transition for a Z on the stack. Uh, that's no good. Right, so the problem is I could immediately take this path here, right? So I'm going to have to have like a working state instead of my start state. Otherwise, they just like immediately choose to go to the bin. So Q0 epsilon Z goes to Q1 S Z. Change all these guys to Q1s. Change that to an S. Change that to a S. And then you transition to some state Q2 and accept. Alright, cool. So let's try that again. Q0, empty string, C or Z, push to SZ. Go to Q1. Q1 does all the things. 
So if I see a 0 and a s, I push 0, z. If I see a 0 and a 0, I push double 0. And if I see a 1 and a 0, that means I'm going to transition to a new state. It's going to start popping things back off again. So that should be q2 or q3 epsilon. So if I see a 0 on the input, sorry, a 1 on the input and a 0 on the stack, I delete both. And Q2 is just going to keep deleting all those things. So if I see a 1 on the input and a 0 on the stack, then I just keep deleting stuff till I get to the point where I see no more input and an S on the stack. Then I pop the S and go to Q3, which accepts. All right, so maybe ignore this. It's a lot hard to design these things when you're just writing out the transition function. It's a lot easier when you're drawing it out grammatically. So now let's give this thing a test. So I see Z on the stack. I see this string. The only thing to do is to read no input, go to Q1. And then in Q1, what can I do? I see a 0 on the input. Oh, my bad, and we push an S on the stack. So consume no input, C a Z, pop the Z, push S Z. So now we have this on the stack. I'll draw it quite a bit larger. Z, S. I see a 0 on the input, a S on the stack. Pop S, replace it with 0S. So, that back and consume an input. I see 0 on in the input, 0 in the stack. Pop the 0, replace the double 0. So, I'm supposed to take the 0 out and put two zeros back. Do it again. Consume another input. Now I see a 1. 1 on the input, 0 in the stack. Pop the 0 and read in the 1. So, the 1 is now gone and the 0 gets deleted with it. <clears throat> now we're in state Q2, and we rinse repeat. C a 1, C a 0, C a 1, C a 0. There's no more input to read, so the only thing I can do is an epsilon transition. And I see the end of stack symbol S, which means I transition to Q3 and accept. So that's how you can design a PDA by scratch. It's a little bit more difficult than just cranking the algorithm, but it's a lot easier to draw it as like a flowchart and then test it with a few cases than it is to draw it like this. Because I see I mucked this one up a few times.